Hi, everyone. I'm Brianna Pitts here, sitting alongside John Keller. Nice to see you Good again. Good to see you. Nice to see you. Chris is uh, on vacation, yeah. so this is when we meet. Again? Again. When does he ever work? That's the key question. I don't know. He's, he's going to owe me a couple when he comes He's a man back. of the world, no question. <laughs> so our first topic yeah. is uh, the Mueller statement. He pretty yeah. much came out this week at this press yeah. conference, and in so many words, left it up to Congress and, and pretty much said it was out of his hands, right? He wouldn't completely right. clear the president. No, in fact, he went out of his way to say, uh, you know, if, if I could have said he was cleared, I would have, but I didn't. Uh, you know, he didn't say anything that wasn't in the Mueller report that came out six weeks ago. The problem is, it appears not too many people have read the Mueller report, including members of Congress, which is uh, an eyebrow raiser in and of itself. Uh, but uh, it, it was certainly a compelling statement in uh, him emphasizing, uh, first of all, that the uh, how severe the Russian threat to our democracy was and continues to be an issue that President Trump, the very next day, uh, after first saying, yeah, well, I had nothing to do with the Russians helping me, then denied that they helped him. He's all over the map on that. Um, and... Uh, also, in uh, him making it clear that Attorney General Barr misrepresented what was in the report with his initial statements. Yet another blow to the already reeling credibility of the administration. What's the bottom line here? It certainly added more momentum to the push for impeachment. With Nancy Pelosi at the wheel, I think we're quite a ways away from that happening. Uh, but it keeps an issue front and center that I'm pretty sure the president's re-election advisors would prefer not be front and center. We are starting to see some Democrats. I saw on Twitter Elizabeth Warren tweeting about this, and there are some people who are using the word impeachment and, oh, yeah. and pushing that term. She so. came out right away yeah. when the Mueller report came out. Now more candidates, Cory Booker, Kamala Harris, Gillibrand has come out now. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's an open question and a fair question as to whether or not that's a good idea politically for the Democrats to put impeachment front and center. Uh, and that is going to be hashed out in the coming weeks and months. Bottom line, though, this is not what the Trump people want Americans to be thinking about as they go into vote a year from November. Certainly not. Uh, next topic here is Democrats are toughening the standards for some yeah. of their later debates. As we all know, we have yeah. this massive pool of candidates. Is yeah. this their way of now saying, okay, we need to kind of weed some of these people out? How do we make it so that we're not listening to 20 plus? Uh, right. candidates up there. Now, under the heading of even a blind squirrel finds an acorn once in a while, I'd like to pat myself on the back and say that the minute they announced this plan for these debates some months ago, I identified it as ridiculous and self-defeating. And I think now the leadership is starting to realize maybe they didn't guess that they would have this many candidates. Because what you have now, the first debates are in late June, and we'll be all over it here on WBZ News, but they're planning on back-to-back -back nights, uh, a maximum of 10 candidates each night. And it won't be like the Republicans did back in 2016, where... They had the major candidates in one debate, and the candidates who weren't polling too well, it, they called it the, like the kids' table at mm. Thanksgiving, although, frankly, <laughs> I prefer the kids' table Same. at my Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> but, um, I, at, but it's not going to be like that. It's going to be all mixed up. It's going to be done by lottery, who gets in what debate. You're creating an environment. First of all, it'll be chaotic, and it creates an opportunity for someone like, say, Donald Trump of 2015 to walk in there and with a couple of clever zingers and a shtick dominate the news coming out of the debate and whether or not that's going to be good for the party I think is a very uh, open question but they've decided that as the debates wear on we get into the fall it's going to be harder to get into the debate worth noting by the way Seth Moulton, our local congressman, as things stand right now, is not going to be in the first debate. That's not good news for his campaign. And is that from a fundraising standpoint that he may not hit that number that he needs to? Fundraising and polling are the two criteria. He's not hitting either one.
Okay. Uh, last and final topic here is sports betting coming to Boston. Yeah. I feel like we've been talking about this for such a long yeah. time. Massachusetts has been moving pretty slow on this. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we've seen MGM open in Springfield. We have the Encore Casino opening in Boston shortly. Is sports betting kind of that next thing that's going to be coming to There's Boston? There's no question it's going to get here. As you mentioned, we're moving slow. We always move slow. We were too slow and missed the wave on casino gambling. And now we're moving slowly while other states, Rhode Island already has it up and running, are, are uh, going to eat to part of our lunch there. But when it comes, uh, it, it's pretty clear, although they're hashing out the details now in Beacon Hill, the casinos are going to have a piece of the action. The uh, online, uh, you know, draft kings, yes. the online, um, uh, I don't even know if they call themselves wagering, but that's essentially what it is. They're going to be involved somehow. There's a question of whether you'll be able to do it from your phone and, and, and that whole thing. Uh, count on the Massachusetts legislature to make a hash of this. The way I believe they made a hash of casino gambling with overregulation, dragging their feet. I mean, this is happening. It's happening all over the country. There's money and revenue to be had. The question is, will we get our share of it in a way that makes sense or botch it? I'm, my guess would be botching it, but I'm not a betting man, Brianna, so no wagering on that. Me either. Not at all. <laughs> Good for you. I don't uh, have much luck at the casino. I like to hold on to my money <laughs> to buy beer. All right, John Keller, thank you so much <laughs> for thank joining you. us Have a great this weekend. Week. You too, and you all and have you a also. great weekend as well.